context of understanding the underlying genetics of this condition, I expect that we'll be uh, identifying several genes that make proteins that play roles in uh, brain uh, electrical circuits. So the challenge as a geneticist uh, is to, to pinpoint which particular gene is, is not normal or has a spelling mistake in it, so it, the readout is that of a, an abnormal protein or the lack of a protein. Uh, and so the way we take advantage of knowing that among those individuals who have DTD, many of them, or at least in our studies so far, several of them have a, a number of relatives or family members who are also affected with the particular trait. And, uh, and so by studying the family, we can actually map the location on the genetic blueprint where this particular gene that plays a role in this, their particular phenotype is present. We know from the Human Genome Project that there are some 25,000 different genes that contribute to making us who we are, and that's a genetic component of that. Uh, the challenge then is to, to dissect out in the midst of this complexity the particular genes that play into the, the particular traits that we are interested in understanding. And so my connection with uh, Giuseppe and the, and the formation of the collaboration on the genetics of, of DTD uh, is really empowered by his early work, that of identifying the original case uh, and then a cohort of individuals with this condition or this set of conditions and it really is that initial effort on describing the trait, and as geneticists we refer to those as phenotypes, it's what do we see, what, how does it present itself. And so by having that steady group, we are able to use the genetics to get in and dissect out uh, or resolve some of the complexity in this condition. Originally, we. We, we learn more about ourselves from, from physical dissection with knives and scalpels and whatnot. But now uh, we are at the point where we can dissect the ultimate level of anatomy of who we are, that being our genetics. I mean, as part of our studies, we've actually been able to link up with, with uh, genomic centers. So these are centers that have the power to do this massive amount of sequencing on individual genomes and identify sequence uh, differences from a consensus sequence, uh, and that's already in place. So it really is an exercise right now in us working with uh, individuals and family members and getting them uh, involved in the, in the genetic studies. The first question I, I had for Giuseppe when we met to discuss the possibility of investigating genetics is I said, among your, the individuals that you have ascertained through your, your testing protocol, do these individuals have family members who are affected with the same condition? And that, that would be the prediction if there was a genetic factor underlying it. The, the, the challenge in this particular trait is that individuals uh, are not affected in such a way that they rush off to see the doctor. And so they are, they are many, many of them are struggling with it privately, and it presents itself in many uh, different ways, which represent their ways of coping with the situation. So I've had the opportunity to talk to other people in social context, and they say, oh, well, I know somebody like that. So in fact, it's, it's reasonably common, but it presents in, in a number of different ways, and that's why I'm thinking that, that there likely are gonna be a number of different genes that play into this particular, or in a subset of neurological pathways. The possibility that when we understand what the gene is and what kind of changes in that gene leads to poor navigational skills, or lack of that navigational skills, the 
flip side of that is that there may be other forms of that gene that make people very, very uh, handy at navigating 